So a brand new version of OBS has just been released. It is OBS version 30. And this one has a lot. <laughs> it has a ton of bug fixes. It has many changes. And most importantly, it has some new features. And so today I'm gonna be going over my top five best features of OBS 30. So let's start off with the number five feature. And it's one that you might not realize is important until OBS has problems. So this is a safe mode. It's primarily meant to protect OBS, specifically when you have a crash and you're trying to figure out what the issues are. And so the safe mode, if something were to happen in OBS, it'll restart OBS in a safe mode, meaning that things like plugins and scripts and stuff won't run and you could actually start this manually as well so if you go to help and then go to restart in safe mode you could also use this as a way to troubleshoot especially if you are running a lot of plugins and scripts and you just want to troubleshoot and pinpoint where the problems might actually be and the number four feature is one that you might easily miss but it's one that I think is important, especially when you want to quickly see how things are going whenever you are doing your recordings or stream. And that is the updated status bar. So if you look down here on the bottom right, there is some additional information. Here is your internet strength. This is if you are streaming, how long you're streaming. This is recording. In this case, it's currently recording this video. This is CPU usage. And then this is the number of frames per second that you're recording right now and if you actually go to your view you could see that you could turn this off if you wanted to there's no status bar or you could turn it on i think this is really helpful especially if you're doing things like streaming and wanting to make sure things are running as well as possible so that is the number four best feature in obs 30. so the number three best feature is more of a quality of life as they have made updates to the filter options and so one thing that you could do before is you could right click on your mouse and then you could go to filters and here say for example you had a whole bunch of different filters and you simply didn't want to recreate this and you wanted to use the same filters on another source so before you could right click on your mouse and then go to copy filters but it didn't have the paste filters options which it now has so you can see here it says paste filters so this makes it really easy for you to copy and paste filters to another source in other scenes or in the same scene. And then another thing that it allows you to do in filters is the ability to move filters up and down. Now, previously, if you were to do this, you can use right here, these up and down arrows as you see here, but now you could actually manually just move this up and down. I know this is a small thing, but it becomes a big thing whenever you have a whole bunch of different filters. So this is once again, a really nice, quality of life improvement. Now, the number two feature is one that I think a lot of people will appreciate. So previously, whatever you had a lot of scenes, you would have to scroll up and down. Now you can move things around here, you know, where it makes things a little bit easier for you to see, but you still had a problem where if you had a lot of scenes, it just becomes like a pain for you to actually have to scroll up and down. So in this case, I am moving the docs around, but it still is hard for me to see all my scenes at once. But now with the new feature called Full Height Dock, I'm able to see basically all of the scenes that I have or more of it all at once. All you have to do is move it over to the far left. And you see now that I have this full height dock for my scenes. And if you wanted to enable this, you can simply go to Docs and you see a new option called Full Height Docs. I think this is a really awesome feature especially if you're someone who has a lot of scenes and getting to my final top feature of obs 30 is one that i think is really specific to users like myself and basically that's for people who don't use microsoft windows or apple mac as their primary operating system and instead i use linux specifically linux mint and this is a big feature that I think a lot of Linux users have been waiting for a long time. And that feature is encoder support, specifically more encoder support. So if you go to settings and then go to output and then recording, and then you go down to video encoder, 
Before, there really wasn't a lot of options for Linux users, and I would basically just use x264. But now, if you choose this drop down, you see way more encoders. Now you have AB1, H264, HEVC, and if you have an Intel processor with an integrated GPU like I do, you can now use QuickSync, H264, and HEVC. So this is really a big thing, especially if you have separate GPUs or integrated GPUs and you want it to be able to utilize this hardware instead of just relying on software based encoding which makes things a lot faster especially if you're the type of person who does a lot of streaming so I think this is a really big thing and it finally puts it on par with the features that Microsoft Windows users and Apple Mac users have enjoyed in OBS so those are my top five best features in OBS 30 if you actually had some other features that you've enjoyed that I didn't cover here, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my OBS tutorials, tips, and tricks, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area below. Get thousands of royalty-free music and sound effects for all your creative needs. Whether you are a content creator, freelancer, or business, Audio has the perfect song for you at amazing prices. For more information, check out the filler link in the description area below.